Okay, so today what we're learning is how to do the basics of making our markdown files. So we're going to do these in RStudio, depending on if you're using RStudio Cloud or your desktop version, and whether it's PC or Mac, you might notice some minor cosmetic differences, but the procedure is still going to be the same. So the first thing we're going to do in making our R markdown file is we're going to go File, New File, and we are going to pick R markdown. So we can put a title in here, so we'll call this our test R markdown document, my author, and then you can select whether it will default turn into HTML, PDF, or Word. We're going to start with a default to PDF, but we're going to be still be able to toggle through all three and show what all three would look like. So we'll hit OK. Now what it's going to do is it's going to create a template for you, so it'll put the title and author that you had there. There's also date. You can change any of these, change this to August 25th, delete it all together. This setup here, we are always going to leave in our document. It has to do with the our code formatting and what it will do. Sometimes you'll put in extra options, so it's a little more advanced and we're not going to do that in this video. This is just a filler text with a bit of reminder of how our markdown works. So if ever you're forgetting something, you can always give a quick look here. But in general, we're going to start off by deleting this. So our first things first, when we want to make headings, we're going to use the pound symbol. So we can make a section one math in our markdown. So the one useful thing about using R Markdown is we can put in LaTeX symbols, where LaTeX is a typesetting language for mathematics. So there's two ways that we can do this. One, by putting it in line in the text, or two, by putting it on its own separate line. So when we want to put a math symbol in line with the paragraph that we're writing, we are going to put the command in dollar sign. So for example, we can put an inline math symbol like this. So between these dollar signs, I'm going to put the command for pi. So LaTeX commands always start backslash and then whatever the code is for the symbol. So Greek letters are just their name and close it with a dollar sign. So you'll notice that when I finish, it will put the symbol that I made or if I mouse over it, it will also show the symbol so that I know I've typeset it correctly. Most math symbols you can very easily just put, for example, integral in LaTeX into Google and you'll get the symbol come up. You can also find a lot of cheat sheets. For my classes, I put a copy of the cheat sheet on UMLearn that has most of the symbols you're going to need. Secondly, we could put math in its own separate line. So we can also put math on its own line like this. And what I will do is we will use backslash square brackets and we'll put our math in between there. So we'll put the area of a circle. So that would be pi r squared. And again, it'll show me what it is that I've typed. So now that we have done our first bit of our document, what we should do is we should compile our document to make sure that this looks like we want it to. My suggestion, especially when doing, for example, a homework assignment, you should knit your document often, probably after every new thing that you do, because if you get an error, you don't want to have to search through half the document to find out where it was. If you can narrow it down to these last two lines of code I've written, you'll have a much easier time finding where your error is. So we are going to go knit. Now because we have not saved this yet, we need to make a file name for it. So we will call this our R markdown demo file. I'm going to put that in a lowercase r. Now I have put some dashes between the words to help make this easier to read. You want to avoid putting spaces when you're labeling files because 
you may need to use them in different programs, compile them together, and computers can have problems reading things with spaces. So we want it to be readable by computers and readable by humans whenever we're making file names. So I will hit save and we will go and we will bring up our document. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for us. So what we can see, we have the title, the author, the date. What I put in the double pound, it put in bold and bigger text. For the inline math, we have that pi. And then for that math, that's its own separate line, it went here. So put a space in its own spot in our document and it's typeset as we want. So that's the basics of putting in math symbols and also text. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is putting in our code. So section 2, our code in our markdown. Now just like with math where we could make it give us math in line with the text or in its own separate line, what we can do is we can also make it calculate our code in line or in its own separate spot. So I'm going to show you the difference here. So we can use inline R code, for example, to calculate 4 plus 5 as being equal to. So now if I want to get R to calculate the value of 4 plus 5 for me, we use backtick r, and I put whatever I wanted to calculate it, 4 plus 5, close with another backtick. So when we compile this document, what we'll see is it will, instead of putting the code here, it will put in the number 9. It will actually evaluate 4 plus 5. This will be very useful when you're making documents, maybe a lab report where you had a big data set. And if you, for example, realize you missed one of the pieces of data or you need to change the unit of measurement on it so you transform your data, you don't need to actually recalculate the mean by hand, for example. You could put a line in your code, the mean of this data set is back tick R, mean of whatever you called your data set. So let's take a look at what this looks like, just to show that it works as expected. So we'll see we can use inline R code, for example, to calculate 4 plus 5 as being equal to 9. It hides the fact that we had code there. Now the other thing we can do is we could put R code in its own line. So the default will be it will give us a box that's shaded in with the code and then it will show us our output. So we can put our code in display chunks as, so when we're trying to put it in its own line, it's three back ticks, curly braces R, close the curly braces, and we'll end it with three back ticks. Then in between that, we'll put whatever we want. So say I have a data set, we'll call this data set X, we'll assign it to be the values one, two, three, three, four, four, six. And then I want to find the average of this data set. So our formula for average in R is mean of whatever we called our vector with our data in it. Now when I go and I run it, what we're gonna see is that in its own gray box, it put the code and then it showed the output underneath the code. Now something else we might want to do is say for a lab report we want to make a histogram or a box plot of our data set. But it's not a coding class, our chemistry prof doesn't care about the code, we might want R to suppress the code and just give us the box plot, just the image that we're making. So. If we want to do that, there's a special option we can put in. So we'll do the thing for non-inline R code. But what we can do in these curly braces is add in some extra options. 
So one thing we could do is we could tell it to not show the code. So that's by using this echo command. Echo equals false. It will say just show the output but not the code itself. So say we want to make a box plot of x. Now we can knit this document. And we'll see that it has put a box plot, but there is no code for the box plot above it. There are other options that we can put in here, but those will be a little bit more advanced and we'll come to them as we get to them. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we could have multiple output types. So we can switch what we want to knit it to. So one thing we could do is we could get it to knit to HTML. And this will get make us a .html file. So we could use this on our website. Also could be something that's easier for sharing as a document. People can open in their browsers with smaller file sizes. So we'll notice some cosmetic differences. Oh, it's above and beyond what we're doing here, but when you want to make output into HTML format, you're allowed to use HTML tags. You could also put in CSS styling into your documents to make them more appealing, or if you're using them to make blogs or make web pages. So just some options for you to think about. And then the other thing we can knit to is we can knit to Word documents. So if you're English class or your chem lab, they want you to make your report in a Word document. You can get it to compile to Word and you'll notice that by putting in those sections, it actually puts in the proper sectioning in Word, which makes it an accessible PDF for people using screen readers, which is a nice advantage to it. And you'll see again some minor cosmetic differences in the way it does the colorings but it makes a Word document that you can share with other people. So that is the basics of making an R Markdown document, and we'll eventually get into some more interesting things you can do, but this is the basics for anything you might need to do to make a basic document or lab report for one of your other classes or to do one of my computing assignments.